Hi there everybody, this is Mary Kirby and I'm at the Paris Air Show gearing up for a very, very busy week. I recently had an opportunity, however, to sit down with Inmarsat. Now, Inmarsat, as you know, provides the L-band satellite aeronautical service that supports in-flight connectivity on aircraft today. But they are also bringing a super-fast KA-band solution to market. And uh, I spoke with Inmarsat's executives about the timeline for doing that and, and just what we can expect. So if you've been following this story at all, I recommend that you watch this video. Uh, my interview with Lars Ringhurst and David Coily of Inmarsat. You've got, you're so close to that uh, entry into service date for the A350. Uh, uh, it is coincidental. Yeah. So, you know, a bit of cooperation and hopefully things can move forward. And we're also doing stuff at L band as well to, uh, to cover off and de risk that side of things as well. But, um, you know, some customers, because the satellites will launch first in, uh, in the the Indian region here, and then so the actual go live dates, so it says from 2014, the yeah. nominal dates are first quarter 2014 for the first satellite. We saw with SWIFT broadband that we got the most interest once we have the global capability, but we know that some operators are saying, no, I'll work now on the first satellite or yeah. operate there and wait for the other satellites to come online. I, I know that I know Swift Broadband's uh, you know had strong growth absolutely, but KA is gonna it looks it's looking at this juncture like it's going to be absolutely massive. I mean it, even if you just look at Qatar Airways orders right now, I mean it just it could be potentially huge. Well, it, it's, it's something that a lot of a lot of airlines think they really need it. If they you know if they've got the application um, application solution sets out there that will drive that, that's fine. Swift Broadband does meet the mission for a whole bunch of. Um, Operators, um, Swift Broadband is something that will provide connectivity, particularly when you add in um, GSM, GPRS, and that capability for people to use their cell phones and you know, behave like or normal people do. You know, not necessarily the, uh, the high-end operators. That are <laughs> well. um, but that's why Swift Broadband can sort of de-risk the obsession with this 2014. Okay. Because they can have it now. They can use it for safety services as well. Yeah. An item, you know, 787 is it's Swift Broadband based safety will be on those airplanes in 30 years time. And adding a fourth channel, is that right? Uh, we're going up to four channels from from this year. Yes. From yeah. October you have four channels. But the thing is, when, when you're saying KA band can be huge, absolutely. But yeah. every aircraft with KA band is extremely likely to be having Swift Broadband on it as well. Very so you just do the numbers, you have over 1500 Swift Broadband channels flying at the moment. You are going to have the L-band services on because you need to be able to do safety services. Right. You need to be in, properly integrated into the aircraft, which for the foreseeable future is going to be L-band. Yeah. So that's what you use for the cockpit anyway. And a lot of people are going to use it for connectivity. So, yeah, it's no question. Best of both worlds for you guys. Uh, and the Inmarsat 6 satellites are yeah. going to be L band as well. So we. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It's not a question of going from L band to KA band. This is something in parallel. And that ties in nicely with Boeing's and Airbus strategy. Yeah. Because if, if you ask them, I don't think they made any official announcements or anything, but if you ask them, well, Swift Broadband would be standard on the aircraft. And then you can put something else on the back of the aircraft. Whatever that might be, it'll be something airing 791 most likely because you only want to punch holes in the aircraft once yeah. or have the enforcement so you can put something on there. So it's perfect. So for any airline, for us, it's, yeah, just want to start to do something today, use Swift Broadband. And, and the characteristics is the difference between the services as well. I can show you that afterwards. But you start using Swift Broadband, you can use up to four channels. Swift Broadband is capable of balancing load in a way that KA or KU could only dream about it. Right. So you start using that when you have the need. Yeah, that's where you put the Kenya. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's best of two. So at this point here, yeah, we are going to run these two networks in parallel. And a lot of people don't appreciate that. I think we're jumping from one to the other. Right. Both. Right, uh, okay, so I mean, yeah, that's clear, that's clear, you guys are, um, I mean, will there be, I, I mean, I don't know, will there be kind of a hybrid kind of solution, sort of, that you, or no? Well, yeah, no. more for the maritime side, okay. some missions okay. where typically, yeah, right, right, right. all above the clouds and all the rest of it, when you're operating special missions, uh, maritime, for yeah. all, you know, they're on the deck and all the rest of it, so we can provide that continuously, we don't see it as being particularly relevant for the okay. Um, but that is one of the reasons why safety services is likely to use L band going forward because it will work whatever the weather right. is like. I right, mean, right, right. Air France 447, if right. that was KU or KA band, 
aircraft, you wouldn't have got any messages off the aircraft. Right. Then, yeah, of course it was. Right. That's what it's all about. It's, 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 it's got to be hugely satisfying uh, when you see the likes of Aircell and, and pretty much all, any of the uh, in-flight connectivity providers out there right now essentially saying they're all waiting for Global Express. I mean, that's... The reaction we, yeah. got, the reaction we got when we launched Global Express um, sort of endorsed... Two, two reactions were, it's one, the airlines that were literally queuing up and wanted to talk to us about, about the capability to us reinforced the fact that they recognized we address uh, the deficiencies of the KU band systems, you know, the patchwork built KU band. Yeah. The fact that it is a global mobile network is what Inmarsat does. It's got mobility management to handle um, spot beam handovers. It's designed as a global network. It's designed for mobile operations from day one. And then the context, the other one is, you know, the core markets we're talking about. If you look at these, are all the different ways um, ways in which the service may be used on the ground, on the oceans, and in air. And then we've got this high capacity overlay capability as well. That is the thing that is unique and designed in from the ground up, as opposed to adapting something that was designed for providing backwards broadband connectivity on the ground or direct to home TV service. Right. This right. is fit for purpose because it's designed for that purpose, not adapting and, and reinventing something. And not having to stitch anything together, Absolutely. having it all. Yeah. yeah. Great.